The beginning was like immediately when I graduated from, uh, from my uh, university studying uh, drama, mainly acting. Uh, it was in 1990 and it was the first year I did the first uh, uh, theater piece. Uh, it was an adaptation uh, text that I wrote, an adaptation of different texts from Eugene Unesco, the, the big writer. Uh, and uh, since then I was doing almost every year a new production. Uh, but actually in 1997 it was like a shifting point in my life in theater where I started like to think why I'm doing theater, why is theater, how we do theater today. I was not convinced of what I was doing before. Uh, and I was, of course, uh, putting questions concerning the, the civil war that we experienced. At that time, the civil war, the fighting was ended and we entered to a kind of a peace. So uh, how I was asking how we can represent our experience in theater. So this is why uh, it shifted me to, to do another way uh, and other ways of theater, of doing theater. So, uh, so for example, it was like how we can create uh, or like find a body language that represent uh, our bodily experience uh, during the civil war. Uh, I was at that time working a lot on uh, physical theater, uh, a lot of movements, uh, a lot of visuals. Uh, and I wanted actually to, to get as much as possible to the experience, the, the, the concrete experience that we experienced during the Civil War. And this was almost impossible, like you cannot bring life in, in theatre, especially we are uh, talking about representation. Uh, so this led me to, to do theatre in another way. So instead of uh, doing movements and physical theater, I start actually to, to do theater where I talk a lot and to represent the body movements by words, not by physical uh, actions. And this has convinced me in, in, uh, in a way because it gives like uh, really a rich uh, images uh, and uh, a good representation because at the same time it uh, it gives the, the audience, the spectators, uh, the possibility to imagine uh, each one of them the image that they would like to do. So you uh, generate uh, the images that I'm talking about in your mind, which is, I think it's much more richer, uh, richer than if I will give you the picture ready. Uh, for me, like, uh, we cannot run away uh, from this uh, uh, two notions, like thinking and feeling. Huh? You cannot separate them, they come together. But actually, it is how much you built or, or how, what is your, uh, your basis that you start the work? Like, is it like you want to the people only to feel or to think. This is the approach. And for, for me and for uh, some other Lebanese artists from my generation at that time, we were very aware actually not to uh, tell the horror uh, of the wars. We didn't want sympathy uh, from the spectator. We, we don't want actually a foreigner also spectator to come and uh, listen to what uh, happened in the war, like to shed tears, like to, to feel. We were not interested in this. Actually, we were, we were interested more on thinking the war, huh? not telling the war, not telling what happened, but thinking of what happened. And this actually, it, it goes and it takes you into a different direction in producing art. Really, it's, it, 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 uh, it takes you in another direction how to think and how to analyze, how to understand, not to tell what happens only, not to play the role of the witness. 
Uh, and in this sense also there were like uh, a notion that we we thought about uh, which is like when you talk about history uh, you see that in Lebanon at least in every in every country is the same but in Lebanon it's very obvious that uh, one of the reasons uh, of the wars and the conflict is about the history of Lebanon how we understand the the existence of this country huh? uh, and we are fighting like the factions the religious they are fighting between each other uh, of each one uh, for his or her version uh, so for for me it was like when you talk about history then you talk about facts and fiction so the fiction is is there so this is how I started to put in my theater pieces the, the facts and the reality intermingling with fictions. So it was not the aim to, uh, to cheat the audience or like to be like, oh, smart. Oh, I was lying, it was not true. No, actually to highlight this issue, to be always aware that whatever I tell you, you have to be skeptical or you have to know that it is a mixture between subjectivity and objectivity and this is something you cannot separate and it's uh, very dangerous when you uh, uh, listen to a nar uh, narration a narrative or like uh, you read a book a history book or a newspaper to to start to separate what is the true and what is the untrue what is the fake what is not fake what no actually the proposition is to take the whole discourse as it is, even if we know that it's completely lies, but to take it as it is and to think what is beyond it. Why this version, why this narrative appeared and analyze it, deconstruct it, and understand what is behind it. And this way, actually, it makes us uh, listen to the other, not to refuse immediately the other. And this is very important to create a dialogue a conversation. To me, each work uh, has its own uh, ways. Like each new work, it comes with a new methods. And I always try not to follow the same method. I'm against uh, having like uh, a methodological uh, way that I follow every work. No, instead, uh, instead I, I rather prefer to, uh, to break uh, things, which is not easy. Sometimes I don't succeed. I do almost the same uh, form or whatever, but I try all the time to change. So, uh, so you, you, sometimes like it's, uh, it's a news that I read that it, uh, it uh, take me to uh, takes me to uh, to the work sometimes i have images in my mind uh, to put on theater that bring the topic so uh, it it's it's every time it's different it's different so uh, so it's uh, it's sometimes the, the the form that bring me to the subject sometimes the subject bring me to the form and and sometimes both together work together so there is no method and i like this it's a bit strange uh, but it's very important because you know like uh, it's almost in the same time when the revolution started in lebanon it started also in chile like it's 18 october here we have it in 17 october and uh, I was in Beirut when it started, the revolution, and we were supposed to, uh, to present uh, Borborigmos, the new piece that we are going to show in a few days here. Uh, and actually there was like a big event, uh, cultural event, uh, uh, organized by Ashkal Alwan uh, Association. Uh, in Lebanon and uh, we uh, all agreed to cancel all the festival and we did not regret because we thought that now it's time to be in the streets not to do uh, uh, art and uh, theater and uh, whatever 
So, um, but, but at the same time, we don't regret it, but it was like I said, like we prepared all of this and, uh, and we did not uh, show the works. So now I'm in Chile and uh, the festival Santiago uh, uh, Amil, Amilo, uh, that uh, they decided to continue. And, uh, and this is was really great because like there is audience and, uh, and you can see like there's connection of what's happening with my works at least with what's happening. This is why I wanted to come uh, to Santiago to, to, to present the works. Uh, because I know that uh, there, there is a big differences between uh, Lebanon and the history of Lebanon and Chile and the history, but also there is a lot of common points. There's a lot of common points. Uh, and we can understand uh, each other. We can understand what's going on here and you can understand what's going on in Lebanon. Although I don't know the nuances of Chile uh, politics, and you don't know the nuances of the Lebanese uh, politics. But still, it's, it's good. So for me, it's very important to be here.